I want to say I am proud of Chudi Ofodile for three reasons. He has shown tremendous courage in interrogating established orthodoxy and views held by even his own father. That is the way to go. The younger generation should start interrogating what has gone on before. When Professor Soludo says Omoaka, I looked at him, remembered how I ran from Ebado in 1965 to University of Nigeria, enlisted in the Biafran Army, and I said, no Omoaka, Bo Omoaka, Omoaka. But the main point is that Chudi, you wrote an extremely readable book. I agree with you, Professor Soludo, it's an unputdownable book. You start it, you can't sleep. You put it in so many short paragraphs and sub-themes that they are readable. There are four areas that interest me. Everything started from January 15 coup and you were not afraid to interrogate it. And I agree with you, Chukwode, it was not an Igbo coup. You can go ahead, do anything you say. It just reminds me of what happened when I was growing up at Obakoba. I think it was Baris Donia Gocho also, who knocked down somebody, and the person was unconscious. And the villagers thought that he had died. So they killed Baristonia Gocha in his car. And when they discovered that their brother hadn't died, they then turned around and killed Baristonia Gocha to justify the fact that they had murdered an innocent man. The January 15 coup, nobody, the, it, it wasn't a leaderless coup. The leader was Emmanuel Efajo. The evidence points to the fact of Emmanuel Ifajo. Nzogu, if Nzogu were the leader, he should have taken charge of Lagos, not Kaduna. But you have established it. And the beauty of even the July 29, where you were again firm, that July 29 did not occur behind the Gawan's back by interrogating the roles of the key operators, operatives at Ebado and the Keja barracks. That, that did not happen by chance. What I loved about your book is that there was no bitterness. That your father fled from Lagos, your mother from Ireland, maternity, and your people. There was no tinge of bitterness in your book. So when I see I hear and read people commenting about Biafra with so much bitterness and venom. And the latest one is whether you walked for 30 months from Gakem, I know it was Gapkem, for that period. I also walked for about the same length of time with torn boots, half stomach, and I'm not bitter. How can you be bitter? In half of this period that I walked, I was watching so many of my relations starve to death with Kwashoko. But I'm not bitter. I have moved on from there, and I will urge the other side to move on from there. And stop talking about Biafra with so much bitterness so that we can move forward and look at the future of Nigeria. The future of Nigeria, I was privileged with some people here. Many of them have gone now, but some of them are here. To organize Mbukuibo, 
It's over 20 years ago. And at that Mboki Ibo, the keynote speaker is here. He's here. And Dr. Lex Epuemei's paper is a very defining paper on restructuring. And for those who think it is regions, Dr. Epuemei's paper, to my understanding, and I want to say it before him here, those who talk about regions should please see that it is six regions. It's not regions. It's not 36 regions. It's not eight regions. It's not 12 regions. It's six regions. And the criteria and the thought was deep. And I still have the original paper today. It balanced out the north, the south, the minorities, and the majorities. So restructuring is the answer. Those who are dragging their feet about restructuring now, I will say two things. First, and what's that? 1978, search of identity, Egypt. That we, will, we are better to act as one family than several families. And then John F. Kennedy says that change is a law of life. And those who keep looking back are certain to miss the future. Thank you. <laughs> Chudi made an important point, very, very important point, that all of us know who we are in Biafra, that the war was fought on one sentence, on Aburi we stand. It wasn't on any other thing. So when you deny a people justice, they are not interested in peace. Justice is essential in any nation. The second point is that you really can't wipe any people out of the face of the earth. When God creates a people to fulfill their destiny within a country, they will do so. And I believe we will do so.